Today I'm going for the Platinum Trophy in Astrobot. To earn it, I need to play as Astro and find all the parts of the PS5, along with every bot aboard it. That means achieving 100% completion. Which was a breeze, because I had such a blast playing this game. I'd even argue that it's the Super Mario Galaxy 3 we never got from Nintendo. From its charming bots, to the wonderfully creative level design, this game was pretty good. It's a strong contender for Game of the Year. So with that intro out of the way, grab your PS5 controllers and let's blast right into the video. As I start the game for the first time, I'm greeted with an absolute banger of a startup song. And let me tell you, the songs in this game are immaculate. Your ears are literally blessed with a sweet satisfaction. It's just so good. But after selecting my save slot, we find ourselves in the PS5. Just chilling when an alien named Nebulax swoops in and steals our CPU. Without the CPU, they explode, sending all the parts and bots across the galaxies. Next thing I know, Astrobot is dead. He's just dead in the desert. <laughs> But with a little shake of the controller, we revive Astrobot and we're good to go. Once revived, we discover a crashing satellite and rush to investigate it. A quick hit wakes it up and following it, it takes us to the Galaxy Hub, where I can select any of the galaxies I want to explore. The first galaxy available though is Gorilla Nebula. As soon as we enter, we spot Nebulax, but he slips away and we dive into our first level, Sky Garden. One cool touch about every level in the game is you actually fly in on the PS5 controller. I think that's a pretty neat feature. Sky Garden serves as basically the tutorial level. While I was getting the hang of things, I snagged my first trophy for rescuing my first spot. Just a minute later, I earned my second trophy for finding my first puzzle piece. A standout feature of this game is that the bots actually have costumes of iconic PlayStation characters. So the first one I find is actually Ratchet, which he's the first of many, about 160 characters. Now, if you stick around to the very end of the video, I'll be showing off every character so you can see who is who. Shortly after rescuing Ratchet, I discover my first ability, the Octopus. This allows Astro to inflate and float through the level. After completing Sky Garden, I move on to the next level, Aztec Trail, where I unlock my second ability, the Frogs. These act as like gloves, helping me knock out enemies and grabbing grabbable surfaces. And as Tech Trail, I also uncover a secret warp that transformed me to the Lost Galaxy. In the Lost Galaxy, it's a set of levels that you can do. I won't really be talking about that because it's basically just more levels. Nothing too crazy. After conquering the Aztec Trail and the level in the Lost Galaxy, I head to the crash site, the main hub for the PS5, where all the bots, puzzle pieces, and parts I collected go. While exploring, I come across large areas I can't access yet, so I venture back into space. Return to the Gorilla Nebula, I dive into Creamy Canyon, an ice cream themed level that features an angry pig. <laughs> After Creamy Canyon, I'm on my way to Construction Derby, when I get sidetracked by an alien ship carrying a puzzle piece. Chasing it down, it rewards me with the piece. But a timer starts, prompting me to destroy some rocks. Breaking them all unlocks a secret level. Just as I'm about to enter that level, an asteroid appears, giving me another secret level to explore. The first secret level is Rolling Star Sola. Which in the beginning of the video, I said this game was basically the Super Mario Galaxy 3 that we never got from Nintendo. Uh, I wasn't wrong, because this level is very similar, if you see here. After completing that, I move on to Retro Rampage 1, where I simply have to defeat these three enemies. Finally, I tackle Construction Derby, where I gain my third ability, a pug. Or as I like to call him, Poochie! Poochie gives me a boost, allowing me to jump higher and break through glass. After acquiring Poochie, I found a crate filled with basketballs, and then I looked around and I found a hoop, so obviously I had to put up a shot. Once I finish Construction Derby, it's time for my first boss fight against a giant monkey named Mighty Chewy. Each boss battle has multiple phases. For the first phase of this fight, he uses billboards to try to hit me off, but he doesn't succeed, and then he uses a bell, but hitting the bell knocks him out, and I have to punch him in the eye. With both eyes red, he uses his teeth, but obviously that's not a good idea. So I punch his teeth out, and he's gone. Once his dental work was complete, a giant banana appears, showing off Spike and a monkey from Ape Escape. Another highlight of this game is that after every boss fight, you get to play a level based on a PlayStation mascot. So since we rescued Spike from Ape Escape, we get to play an Ape Escape level. In total, there's five of these PlayStation levels, and this is by far my favorite one, and we'll get to the other ones later. But for the Ape Escape level, we actually get to play as Spike, and we collect the different monkeys. Once collecting all the monkeys, we have to go to the top, where we face a mini-boss, Spectre. And upon defeating him, where I earn my first part for the PS5, the memory. Back at the crash site, I fix the memory and earn a trophy. And having enough puzzle pieces collected, I unlock the Gotcha Lab. After putting the memory back in, another satellite crashes nearby. But it's in one of those larger areas I couldn't access before. But now that I have enough bots, I can go in and get the satellite. However, I realize I still need to find a bot from the Gorilla Nebula, leading me back to a secret level called Crumble Rumble 1, using the lasers from the bottom of my feet. 
In the next galaxy, called Tentacled System, I spot Nebulax again, but he gets away. The first level of this galaxy is called Go Go Archipelago, where I acquire my fourth ability, the Monkey, allowing me to climb certain walls and swing up poles. I think this is one of my favorite abilities because I love monkeys. At the end of the level, I face off against a mini boss named Captain Pincher, who is easily defeated. The next level is Downsize Surprise, where I gain my fifth ability, the Mouse, which allows me to shrink and grow. After Downsize Surprise, I tackle Trunk of Funk, earning my sixth ability, the Elephant, which can suck up liquids and solidify them beneath me. At the end of this level, I face the Tama Trio in another mini boss fight. This game has more boss fights than I thought it would. I dive into Warming Passage, where I take down two worms at once. Now it's time for the final boss of the galaxy, Wacko Taco, a massive octopus with boxing gloves. To defeat him, I have to wait till his gloves get stuck in the sand and then knock them off. Once they knock off, I grab his tentacles and launch into his face, and then I smash his goggles. Once I do this twice, his goggles fall off, and then he parts the seas running away. Chasing him down, I do this basically once again and blast him away. After the fight, Kratos and Atreus appear in a bow, leading us to the God of War level. I found this level enjoyable because I like God of War, but not better than the Ape Escape level. In the God of War level, I need to find all of Odin ravens and get to the end and fight against a large pig named Nidhogg. This battle was pretty straightforward. Dodge the pig, grab his tail, and swing him into the ice, getting the SSD. Back at the crash site, I repaired the SSD and got another trophy. And I had enough puzzle pieces to unlock the dual speeder garage. Since I unlocked that, I also wanted to check out the gacha lab for the first time, which gave me a prize and also a trophy. Went back to the tentacle system, I found my first void levels. These are more challenging levels compared to the base levels. It's kind of like the knitted night challenges from Sackboy A Big Adventure, if you've played that. The first couple voids weren't too bad. There is one that's a little bit challenging, and we'll get to that later. I then wanted to peruse the crash site a little bit, and I got a few trophies along the way. Afterward, another satellite crashed, leading me to the next galaxy, Serpent Starway. Upon entering, we spot Nebulax once again, but of course, he gets away. The first level was Slow Mo Casino. This gives me my seventh ability, a timer, which allows me to slow down time and win big on the slot machines. Beating a few more levels, I find myself in Trapped in Time, where I unlock the 8th ability, the Chicken, allowing me to launch straight into the air. Then Bathhouse Battle grants me the 9th ability, the Sponge, letting me absorb water and grow in size. After completing every level, I go into the boss fight against Lady Venomara. She does a few attacks at me, but I just dodge them, and then she gets ready to spit her acid, but I use the Chicken to launch onto some pillars to dodge the acid. After that, she tries to attack me, but I destroy her rings and knock her out. Underneath her chin is a diamond, I use the Chicken to hit the diamond, and it does some damage to her. Doing this twice, launches her into the air into the second phase. In this phase, we ride on her bushy slides on the mountain and we have to dodge these purple acid balls. Dodging them and getting to her head, we hit her under the chin, launching her, and knocking her out. Before she knocks out, she spits out a chest with Nathan Drake inside. Now, it's time for the Uncharted level. For this level, I'd rank it in the middle between Ape Escape and God of War. In the level, I must find three eggs for a trophy. And then at the end, I get chased by Chief Kawa, who gets crushed, rewarding me with the GPU. Fixing the GPU at the crash site, I got a trophy. And then having enough puzzle pieces, I unlock the Safari Park. Now it's time to check the newly crashed satellite for the next galaxy. But before that, I wanted to see what other trophies I can get. I had to go over to this wall of bots and make them fall. I found the last bots in the Serpent Starway. Took a picture at a photo spot. Caught the golden butterfly in the ape escape level. Splashed some water on the street while he was singing. Knocked one bot out of this tower and he stayed standing. Leaped out of the water and threw a ring with the 10th ability, the penguin. And lastly, I got a pick of two legendary explorers. 
After getting these, I was going through the fourth galaxy, Camel Cosmos, which was like the others, and not much happened. Now it was time for the boss fight. This was against Mecha Leon. He shot fire and rockets at me, which I just dodged, and then when he would shoot his tongue at me, I would slow down time and I would run up his tongue and hit his uvula. He won this three times, he was defeated, and from underneath me grew a sprout and a little blob. This little blob was from Loco Roco, which is now our Loco Roco level. Out of all the PlayStation levels, I think this one is at the bottom. None of these are bad, but I just didn't care for this one as much. So getting this one done, I picked up the cooling fan and took it back to the PS5, getting me another trophy. Now going back to the void challenges I was talking about earlier, in this world, I had one of the most challenging void challenges. It took me about 20 minutes just to complete this one challenge. It was super annoying. I don't know what it was, but like the fire, something about this rubber duck, the water was like, it was going in spots, but then it wasn't going in some spots. And then this part, like the ink kept getting me and slowing me down. And it, it, this level was just annoying. Eventually I got it. And then I had all the bots in the Camel Cosmos. I also got all the bots in the Lost Galaxy. The next galaxy up was called Feather Cluster. Beating the levels and going into the boss fight, I was up against Falcon McFly. Using the 11th ability, the Armadillo, it protects me from any attack he does. All I gotta do is ball up. So when he's trying to hit me, I ball up and it bursts him back and his wings open. Once his wings are open, I unscrew the things on his side and make him flip to his back. On his back, I go to the top of his head and crush his head in. Doing this a couple times knocks his helmet off and then I whack his bump until he crashes and on his chest is a little egg. In this egg is Aloy, which just means it's time for the horizon level which honestly i genuinely enjoyed this one more than the god of war level now if i was actually playing the real games of god of war or horizon i'd preferably play god of war than horizon for this instance in astrobot i prefer the horizon one but in the horizon level i wield aloy's bow which has a slow-mo feature and i think this is the reason i'm a sucker for slow-mo and a sucker for bows and to make it even cooler at the end of the level a t-rex chases us while we're on a turtle which I think that's pretty cool. After defeating the T-Rex, I collect the last part of the PS5, the protection covers, and then I head back, clean it up, and get another trophy. Now that I got the last part to the PS5, Nebulax appears to tease the CPU. It's finally time to rescue it. But first, I wanted to get a few more trophies, including reaching the top of the PS5, and collecting 150 prizes from the Gacha Lab. After securing those, I saved the last bots in Feather Cluster and returned to the crash site. For the final battle, we take off in the PS5 and all the bots come with us to stop Nebula. We have like a Star Wars kind of fight before reaching him. Once I get to him, it's time to fight. We use the PlayStation 5 as the battleground and he uses his ship as a wheel to see which ability we're gonna get. Up first, I get the monkey ability, which with the monkey ability, he'll shoot his gun at me and I pick up his bullets, throwing it back at him. Once he's hit and knocked down, he covers up the CPU, but I punch his fingers out of the way and break the first lock. After that, we have our next ability. But unfortunately, twice in a row, I got the skull, which just gave me a bunch of enemies. After the skulls, I got the octopus. For the octopus, I just had to keep going up and down and avoiding these pink walls. Once his gun jammed, it shot one single octopus, and attaching myself to the octopus, I launched at Nebulax, damaging him. Now it's time for the second lock to be broken. When he spun the wheel, I got the 12th ability in the game, the magnet. For this one, he just shot a bunch of rocks in the sky, and once they broke, I collected the pieces and threw it back at him. Now it was time to break the final lock. And breaking the final lock, we saved the CPU, and Nebulax was defeated. Or so I thought. He appeared again trying to beat us, but I used the PS5 controller to blast him away. But blasting him away caused a black hole. He didn't want to be alone, so he grabbed me too. All the bots saw this and tried to save me, but in a heroic sacrifice, I let go. And as all the bots are crying, the Atreus bot actually notices I'm still alive, and I'm flying back to the PS5. And splat, we're dead. Luckily, the bots give us some extra parts. We rebuild Astro, and everything's good as new. Then the credits roll, and the game was finally beaten. If I wasn't going for the trophies. Now the last couple of trophies I'm missing were pretty simple. After the fight with Nebulax, I had collected every puzzle piece in the game, which unlocked the golden statue. 
now that all the parts were back together, I could hear them singing on the side of the PS5. And then going back to the horizon level, I had to defeat 7 enemies with the Tripcaster, which was this purple electric wire. Then heading over to my favorite marsupial, I busted a move with them. And I had to make this tough guy drop all of his items. And since we were only two trophies away, I felt it was time for a dance party. And then for the final trophy, I needed to rescue the Master Bot at the top of the Golden Statue. This was a challenge level like the Void ones, and it was pretty challenging, but it wasn't as bad as the other one I did that took me 20 minutes. This one only took me 10. Eventually I beat it, and at the very top, it was... And with that, I've earned the Platinum Trophy for Astrobot. Thanks for staying to the end and watching. I really appreciate it. I want to know what your thoughts are on my video. Uh, what are some things you like and what are some things you think I can improve on? Please let me know in the comments. And if you don't want to comment, maybe subscribe. And check out my previous video where I get Platinum on Sonic's Ultimate Genesis Collection. Now, as I said in the beginning of the video, here's all the cameo characters in the game. Thanks for watching, and I'll catch you in the next video. See ya. Yeah.